So before we start, I just want to let everyone know that Windows has basically made my career. A lot of folks think of me as like a Linux guy or, uh, you know, maybe even Mac OS here and there. But really, Windows has been the thing I know the most about. I have 11 different professional certifications and I really, really know it. It is the one thing I've made a career out of. So thank you to all the Windows users, because without you, I would not have made well over a million dollars in the past 20 years. So let's get on the desktop and go over why Windows is not secure, how all the attack vectors and things that I would do to affect a Windows install, and then you can kind of make your system a lot more secure. Now, the big thing here is there's no internet security suite that will help you. <laughs> Don't waste your money on these things. They will literally just be pouring money down the drain and you're not going to be any more secure. These methods I'm about to show work on any system. So even the lockdown systems uh, to an extent. So there's many of these things that cannot be locked down and are readily available on pretty much any system. So... Let's try and harden up your system and also make you aware of all the attack vectors in Windows. Okay, so the very first thing you can do and something that you need to make sure you really trust if you're running a script or whatever it might be, whenever you open up PowerShell, so Windows Terminal with Admin, or you can go into PowerShell a variety of different ways, but as soon as you see Admin with PowerShell, it basically means anything can be done to your system. Things you do in here aren't even accessible to someone that knows like the system inside and out. Like you go uh, sysdm.cpl and pull up like the old school system properties and start modifying things in here. But you give me PowerShell and PowerShell any day of the week, I can change anything about any Windows system. So once I have admin access to PowerShell, game over. Now this can be controlled and there's certain things we can do to disable PowerShell and re-enable PowerShell. So uh, something I'd probably recommend folks to do, but again, we'll address that here in a little bit. Let's move on to the second way people get uh, taken advantage of, or you can easily exploit Windows. And that's really done through something called Task Scheduler. Task Scheduler has been around since the pretty much the XP days, maybe even before that. But if you go into here and just type Task Scheduler, and it should pull up, this is something where you can't really disable anything in here uh, as far as the use of a task schedule, but so many new tasks can be created. You can do self-elevating tasks, all kinds of things. If you go into your task schedule library right here, look what's in here, because this is places where a lot of applications, viruses, uh, malicious actors might add things into here. And, uh, this can slow you down and run certain executables that maybe you don't want to run. So I need to probably go through mine. It's been a minute. Like RTSS, what is that? And if we go to actions, you can see, oh, that's Reva statistics tuner for like my FPS counter when I'm doing gaming. Uh, MSI afterburner, same thing. And then CNEX, oh, that's an AMD process. I was like, I don't know what that is. That's AMD. But just make sure these things are doing the things you want them to do. And if you don't want them to do it, like as far as an update task for AMD right here, probably don't need this. So I'm going to just hit disable and then get out. Now, a lot of people recommend deleting these. A lot of times applications will repopulate what's here, but a little hack here is just to hit disable. It can make your system run a little bit faster. Or if you get in trouble and you disable the task you really need, you can just come right back in here and click enable and everything's right with the world again. So watch out for task scheduler. Come through here. Look at the base one first and just make sure everything in here you can actually identify. When you see generic names like modify link update, click it, okay, that's in the AMD folder, probably something that would be okay. Uh, but then again, if I wanna really get the maximum performance for my system, I probably would, again, disable this. So moving on from this, there's a lot of other ways to take advantage of things. 
Probably the biggest thing is like a VPS script, which is a visual basic script. These run natively on Windows and I use like some VPS grip strips, like everything I'm showing today, there's an actual use case for using them in a business environment, but it just so happens that a lot of home users and other users can get taken advantage of when used improperly. So these visual basic scripts more often than not are viruses, something that you need to be careful about. So anything, anytime you see like a, a dot VBS, you should be worried about that. So, you know, just to kind of show uh, this right here, I'm going to just uh, highlight all this, copy it. This is just a generic deployment script from uh, GitHub. And I'm going to save this just to show you how this looks. So, you know, hey, if you see this file, do not run it unless you know exactly what it's doing. And we'll just enable it test.vbs and save it to documents. Just to show you, there is an antivirus working in the background, but I can still use all these tools easily to exploit a system. But also most of these are used in business to take care of systems. Uh, so I'll let that scan in the background, but you'll notice it doesn't really catch much, especially when you're going through here. So anytime you look at these types of things, let me blow up these views. Let's go with a large icon. This is the icon almost every VBS script has. You see this little curvy uh, notepad looking thing. That's a Visual Basic script. And there's been so many viruses and different things that have taken this form factor. So be very cautious when clicking anything that ends with VBS or has this icon. Uh, good chance that you're going to run into problems. Uh, probably the biggest thing I've done with a VBS script was I transplanted about a thousand users uh, on-prem Outlook Exchange mailboxes onto an Office 365 mailbox, and I was able to swap all of their mail so it wasn't downloading a thousand user mail whenever I did the, the full conversion. So that was a good example of maybe when you might use a really complex VBX script to do something that you really can't do in PowerShell easily. And that was one thing I had to really interact and need a little bit more power than PowerShell. But again, VBS scripts can be very dangerous. And moving on from that, I probably would pull up a group policy editor. Now, some people don't have this. Like if you're on Windows Home Edition, you probably don't have this. But this is some place that you can actually come in, kind of take a look. Uh, a lot of it, if you just go into all settings, if you're looking for something like, hey, what has actually been changed on this system? I usually just go all settings, sort by state, and then look at what was configured. And this is a good way to maybe uh, get a better grasp on your updates and also other things. But also this can be abused with certain aspects uh, of scripts on startup shutdown. So check this to see if anything's may maybe pulling up. You got PowerShell scripts that can run as your computer's starting. And this is the computer configuration. So even if you lock down PowerShell from a user standpoint, you can bypass it with group policy editor on startup using something like this. So this is something to watch out for. And also on shutdown, you can run different scripts, PowerShell scripts, all these things to manipulate any Windows instance to your needs, uh, but something to definitely watch out for. And there's so many different policies and things you can set in here to really abuse the system. So be careful with group policy editor. And if you set too many policies, uh, always remember you can come into all settings and sort by state and kind of uncheck it. If I ever come behind someone that may not have known what they're doing, this is a good way for me to fix uh, someone that just got policy happy. And then final, something that probably should be pretty much disabled on every system is regedit. And this is the registry, the brain of Windows. And register, uh, regedit is kind of an interesting uh, thing because you can do all kinds of different uh, aspects with this. I was actually messing with the NTFS in here. But again, everything I've kind of gone over, all this can be done in registry, which is kind of wild. There's so many different aspects in, in here that you could set. So disabling regedit, uh, I would re probably recommend for most users because more often than not, folks will make uh, mistakes in here and uh, cause their system to either become unresponsive, not boot, all kinds of bad things can happen from registry editor, but it is extremely powerful. So be very careful with registry, uh, regedit. Um, this is something that I'm in quite often. Uh, sometimes if I'm setting up like an auto login, I might automatically put it in here because most of the GUI functionality of auto login and Windows systems have been removed. 
but you can still auto log into your system using uh, Windows. Obviously, you probably wouldn't want to do that because it makes it very insecure for anybody that has access to your system. So that really kind of brings us to the point of how to protect yourself and something that I'd recommend. It's a free tool. It's a public open source on GitHub. It's been updated for years. I've used this probably for four or five years now. Um, but before we get into that one thing, I would mention about group policy. If you are on home and you want group policy, this right here will actually enable group policy just using a simple DISM command from your elevated PowerShell. So these things have purposes and you can do a lot of cool things with them, but just be very careful following some guy on the internet's advice about uh, running a command. If you really don't know what it does, you probably shouldn't run it. So with that said, let's click over to here to GitHub and look at hardened tools. These are things that you might run on your system to make it a little bit more secure. Now, this is just the base fundamentals from Microsoft. There's many other things that happen in your Windows system that can also make it weak to security, even if you do have all the the fancy internet security suites and all that garbage. Uh, yeah, let's just go and download this so I can actually show you. The CLI, that means command line interface. You're gonna want probably just the GUI version of this. And we're gonna run this executable and it should prompt for elevation. Say yes, and there we go. All right, oh, I think I got some <laughs> some other things going on. Uh, I think that, let me, let me shut off my FPS counter real fast. So this is the base thing. It's just set by default to harden it. All you have to do is click harden. However, I like to see exactly what it's doing. So let's click expert settings and kind of see what the defaults are. It disables Windows script host. That's all those VBS files we talked about earlier. That's a good thing. There's a lot of Office exploits. So when you use Microsoft Office, there's plenty of different attack vectors that happen there. This kind of disables macros, ActiveX controls. So many malicious things can come through email, all through Office. Same goes for Adobe Reader. Adobe does a terrible job of securing their product. Uh, it's happened ever since Flash, and that's the reason why Flash disappeared was because of so many uh, problems with, with it. So Adobe Reader is an excellent uh, one that should be hardened, and this kind of helps harden Adobe Reader. Auto Run, Auto Play, I didn't even mention that, but this basically means when you insert a CD-ROM or a thumb drive, some of them have automatic executables that run when you plug them in disable this because if let's say that thumb drive is infected with a virus, it wouldn't run it automatically with that disabled. PowerShell we already talked about. You could even disable command prompt. I probably would leave this enabled. By default, they have it left enabled uh, just so you can re-enable some of this stuff without running this tool if you needed. User account control that just sets it to always notify you whenever something's asking for administrative privileges because these can make massive system changes to you. File associations, it always shows like that .vbs that I talked about earlier. And then uh, Windows ASR rules. I have to look into that. I'm not actually sure. And then uh, PUA protection that's uh, extending Windows Defender, it looks like. So this would actually harden your system up. I'm not going to run this because I do a lot of stuff for, for my job that might uh, need these tools active. So I know not to do these things. And when I do use them, I... I, I use them responsibly, but I don't want you Windows users to ever feel safe because you're not. That's one thing about Windows. It's not a secure system. It never has been. It was never intended to be. Maybe back in the NT days when it had uh, proper elevation stuff, but it's just such a hack job of different things that can happen to your system. That's why a lot of uh, people use Mac or, or Linux, because those alternative operating systems do offer a lot more privacy and security. So with that, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one.